Today I'm going to show you how to cut your 3D printing times in half without wrecking your quality. More parts, less time. And you don't even need a fancy machine or a PhD in slicer settings. I'm kind of salty I didn't figure this out sooner. It would have saved me hours and a whole forest of wasted filament. Quick disclaimer, this is for beginners and not for all you five year 3D printing veterans out there. So grab a snack because this video could pretty much save you a ridiculous amount of time. To keep things fair, we need a benchmark print. I'm using my PS5 controller holder as an example. I print stuff like this all the time. Most of the time, I need to print fast prototypes of my designs, so they don't have to be perfect. Printer of choice, the Bamboo A1. Already a speed demon, but let's see how much faster we can push it. Right, standard settings first, and it came out looking great in two hours and 59 minutes. Let's beat that. Tip one, reduce infill. First of all, drop that infill. Default is usually around 15%, but you can often go down to 10 with zero issues. Unless you're building a bridge or a dumbbell, you really don't need a ton of strength. And just this one tweak saved us 22 minutes. Fun fact, part strength actually depends more on wall thickness than infill. So if you do need strength, try adding an extra wall instead of cranking up the infill. And in theory, you can actually go as low as 0% infill, but your top layer will still need something to sit on. Enter tip two, the lightning infill. Lightning infill, this stuff is magic. It barely adds any structure, but still supports your top layer and slices fast. You'll notice your part looking pretty hollow, well, because it is, but 15% infill with lightning isn't the same as 15% with grid. Grid might weigh 40 grams, for example, and lightning only 30 grams. There's a huge difference. Want to get fancy? Use modifiers. Add a high infill only where you need strength, like the base, and keep the rest light. Just slap on a modifier on the area you want and crank up the infill there. Easy. Now that one tip has now brought our time down by 37 minutes. Not bad for clicking a couple of buttons. Tip three, next up, layer height. Standard is 0.2 millimeters. Let's bump that up to 0.28 millimeters. Less layers equals less time. Now we're at 45 minutes, love it. Now this tweak works best for flat models. If your part has curves or detail, you might get a staircase look. So you might want to avoid this step. Bonus tip, bigger nozzle. Want to go full speed demon? Then use a bigger nozzle. If you swap in a chunky 0.8mm nozzle, it's another game changer for simple prints like this. Wider lines equals fewer passes equals more speed. You can cut your wall count, infill or even use thicker layer heights, but again, don't expect fine details. It's going to be like painting with a roller instead of a fine brush. All in, I took this print from 2 hours 59 minutes down to just 1 hour 42 minutes. That's nearly half the time and it will still be totally usable. Would I want to go to this extreme? Probably not maybe for printing faster prototypes. But I think I'll go back to the 0.4 nozzle and print from there. It's still shaved nearly an hour off my print. And here's the final result. And yeah, it's a little rough around the edges, but it's strong, functional, and it gets the job done in less time. You've got to choose, do you want a showroom shine or speed? For everyday parts, this level of quality is totally fine. For detailed figurines, maybe slow it down a bit. And that's it. If you want faster prints, start by reducing infill and switching to lightning infill. Those changes alone will save you tons of time without sacrificing much quality. Then tweak layer height, line width, and maybe a bigger nozzle if you're feeling brave. Hit that like button if this helped. Drop your own speed hacks in the comments, and I'll catch you in the next one. Happy printing.